Welcome to Subatomic Workshop. Today I'm making a Tetramino necklace holder for my wife. I had this idea a few years ago and he even started the main piece with a Dremel. I didn't have a lot of the tools that I have now, so as you can tell from those shaky lines, anything I do now will be a lot better than whatever it would have looked like if I had finished it back then. So I started off by cutting the main piece of the body as those, at those Dremel lines and then trimming it down to its final size on the table saw. And I realized after I trimmed them down that the sides weren't completely straight as the original piece was cut with a circular saw, so I made a one-sided cross-cut sled to even out the edges. Then I went ahead and put a bevel on all four sides of each piece to look like the individual Tetris pieces, and I used a chamfer bit in the router for this part. And here they are laid out as they're going to be, and uh, I'm just going through the process here of trying to figure out where to put the pieces that will hold the necklaces. And the front of the pieces that will hold the necklaces are going to look like little Tetris pieces as well, just smaller. So I cut down some more MDF to 3 quarters of an inch. And here are some test pieces I made to see how I wanted to bevel the smaller pieces. And went ahead and decided just to bevel the front and back of them. I then made this get a little marking tool and I marked the bevels on each of the uh, pieces for the smaller ones. And then I went ahead and beveled them on my, on my disc sander. And the marking and the beveling of all these little pieces was a real tedious task. Now because the bevel was so large on the main piece, there was no way I could glue it together and have it work without adding a backer piece, so I traced out the rough shape on some thinner MDF I had left over from my son's workbench and cut it out. And before gluing the two pieces together, I drilled some slots in the back of the main pieces where the screws would go to hang it. I then went ahead and uh, squared them up and glued them together. Now I didn't have on, plan on having this backer board, but it helped by making the hanging situation easier. You do gotta love useful mistakes. After all, that is how my son was conceived. And after the glue dried, I trimmed off some of the extra backer board on the table saw by setting up some stop blocks and just eyeballing where to cut it. I set the stop blocks to stop the cuts early so I wouldn't cut into the main body. Since the blade is circular, if I were to cut it too far, I'd have big cuts in the back side because the front of the blade cuts further than where the tip of the, where you can see it through the top. So I just stopped everything really early. And here is what was left to cut, and I just went ahead and did that with a small hacksaw. I then took the piece over my router table and used my flush trim bit. First pass I had it a little low, so after adjusting that I continued on. I've never used a flush trim bit in the router before, um, but I realized after some discoloration on the bit that I think I was asking too much of it by going through the amount of material I was. 
So I started chipping it away at it instead of just plowing through it. And I think next time I'm going to try to trim more of the excess so there's just a little bit to go over with the bit. And there was a small gap between the two pieces that I tried to fill with plastic wood. This is the only time use, second time using this product. I've used other wood putties, but both times I've used it, I haven't gotten decent coverage with it. Um, I'll have to experiment a bit more as I wasn't happy with the results again. I then chiseled away the inside quarters where the flush trim, bin, tr flush trim bit couldn't fit. That's a mouthful. I then drilled through the backer board into the slots on the main piece and added a smaller notch where the screw for hanging it will fit into place. Then I went ahead and cleaned it up with a chisel and test fit the screw. Then it was time to glue up the smaller tetraminos. I did some experimenting with clamping and the easiest way I could find was just with rubber bands. Uh, the clamps kept moving the pieces around, except for the square ones. On the square ones, I was able to use clamps. After the glue was dry, I re-sanded them all so the edges were even. And I put a slight, albeit unnecessary, bevel on the hanger pieces. And here I marked out some lines to keep my cut straight, and then took some notches out of the hangers over on the bandsaw. I tried to make a variety of widths and depths as I wasn't sure all of the sizes of necklace my wife had. And I made a small jig out of scrap to be able to align the pieces as I wasn't going to be able to see where to put them through the tape. I put down these pieces of tape to keep paint from getting there, so when I glued them down, it would be wood to wood to make sure there was good adhesion. I also added tape to the back side of the hanger pieces. Then I started the priming and painting. I started by putting down two different colored primers, a la Bill Duran at Prunish Props, and sanded it down. That's about as detailed as I'll get with the painting aspect, as I suck really hard at painting, and it would be irresponsible and push almost a crime for me to even act like I'm teaching you anything when it comes to finishing, as I'm still learning myself. Uh, so check YouTube for others that actually know what they're talking about when it comes to that, like Punish Props, The Wood Whisperer, Jay Bates, and I'm sure there are plenty more, especially um, in the different materials specifically you are painting. I'm sure there's you know specialists who know what they're really talking about. All I'll say is there was a lot of sanding and painting involved. And also as a side note, I wanted the paint to look newish, but not perfect. I would never be able to pull off perfect anyways, but I've been playing Fallout 4 again recently and wanted it to look like it was untouched by anyone, but like it had been sitting around for 200 years. It's not quite as muted as I wanted, but we'll see how the wife likes it, and if necessary, down the road, I'll add some aging or a darker top coat over it. I did seal everything up because it is going to be in the bathroom, and the MDF will swell if it gets wet, 
so I did seal the entire thing with a poly acrylic. This is just me gluing up the smaller tetraminos to the piece and uh, putting some wood and some weight on there to keep everything aligned. And here's where the piece will sit. It's a weird little wall between our closet and our water closet. Yeah, I know it's a stupid name for that room. Um, but you can see ne another necklace holder in the background that never gets used. Let's hope this one doesn't have the same fate. I went ahead and made a cardboard template to get the holes transferred but realized it wasn't going to work so I just stuck some half inch screws in the holes and pressed it against the wall to make marks then went ahead and drilled them and put in wall anchors. And the lighting is horrible in these shots I know but here it is done. If I were to build this again, I would make sure to pay more attention when gluing everything together. As you can tell, some of the smaller tetraminos are slightly crooked. Also, I'd probably make all the smaller ones just the straight and square tetraminos as they were a lot easier to assemble. And here's what I'm hoping won't happen with our necklaces anymore. But uh, if you did like this video, please like it. For more nerdy builds and witty commentary, please consider subscribing. I put out as videos as often as I can. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them for me below. Thanks for watching.